Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And we've gotten back to the t-shirt shop. Last lesson we made the form for this. And this time we're going to do the first part of the program code uh, where we can uh, work out how to do text to number conversions and number to text conversions, as well as working on button click events, which we'll uh, show you a bit more soon. All right. so. In this lesson, we're doing the programming code. So it's really important you've done the previous lesson because if you have not done this previous lesson, T-shirt shop screen form build, you will not have this screen form here. And so you won't be able to write any code for the screen form. All right. So in today's lessons, we're just going to work on this black T-shirts. And what we're going to do is <coughs> fix it up so that you can select uh, one of these sizes say how many you want in the quantity and then the button sequence is click the calculator button and then it'll calculate how much that's going to cost and then you can buy the black t-shirt and you can also cancel if the customer changes their mind now when you buy it what should happen is the amount should get updated onto the order total all right now these other three t-shirts are uh, the codes almost the same but we're not going to do all of that in this uh, lesson because it'll be too long we'll show you a little bit of it at the end but that's going to be in the part two lesson then we'll have the t-shops shirt built so let's just jump across and show you what should be uh, finished and what will happen by the time we finish this part one lesson all right, so here we are across in Visual Studio, and that's the form which we built in the other lesson. And we've actually, uh, when you add all the code from this lesson to the form, what you'll be able to do is uh, start up the program, see if we can get a bit of a better background for it here. Um, let's just get rid of, no, we'll leave that there because we'll need that later. All right, so here's our t-shirts program. So we can put in uh, the name, Mr. Pickle. He wants to buy some t-shirts. Uh, let's just give him an Aussie mobile phone number here. All right, now the button sequence is that you select a size. So let's say we forget to select a size. Uh, and we've got a quantity, we want to get two of them, but we forgot to do the size or Colin, who we're building this for, forgot to do the size. When you click here, notice it says on the calculator, it goes amount, error on the size, kind of reminding you, you need to go back and pick a size. So let's get two kids t-shirts and then we'll click calculate. Now that has worked this time and it's come out as $30 because it turns out kids t-shirts inside the program in the price list we're going to build inside the program which we cannot see uh, here the prices kids t-shirts cost fifteen dollars each so when you get two of them that's fifteen plus fifteen and that makes thirty dollars so that's all good and then you decide to buy the black t-shirt and see how the order total up here in the right hand corner has been updated to thirty dollars you've currently got thirty dollars worth of uh t-shirts there now maybe the um, customer changes their mind while they're on the telephone to colin and they say oh hang on no sorry i wanted three t-shirts uh what they can do is they can cancel here and that's going to reset the order total back to zero up the top right hand corner and down in here you can see everything's been cleared again so we can go kids t-shirts all right they want three of them uh, and the sequence is calculate a button before the buy button so calculate a button then Colin can tell them, okay, three t-shirts is going to be $45. You're happy with that? And they say yes. And so we click buy black and then we've got $45. And buy black is disabled because if it was still enabled, people could still, Colin could accidentally double click it and the order total would jump up to 45 plus another 45 is 90. So we only want them to buy once. We don't want them to accidentally double click and add too much money onto the order total. So that's what we're going to be building uh, this lesson. And we're going to break it down so that we do the calculator button first part first. So when they click on here, we're going to get it to find out the price inside the program and do the math and work out it's $45. And then uh, we'll get that working. Then we'll work on the buy button so if they can click that the program can see this $45 worth of items here and add that onto the order total. All right. And then the last thing we'll do is 
work out how to do the programming for this cancel button. So there's three buttons you calculate, you buy, and then you may or may not decide to cancel. All right, so we can work on each of those three buttons separately and build up our program gradually. And this is called the agile process of coding, where uh, this agile method, we build a bit, test it, make sure it's all working before we go on to the next bit, break it down into small manageable chunks. Okay, so remember, I'm a bit of a slow talker, uh, so make sure you increase the playback speed of the video. You just go to the YouTube uh, cog here, the tools cog, click on that and go to playback speed and make it 1.5, 1.75, or even two times speed. And the video will have a video timeline index, so uh, it'll be a fairly long lesson. So let's say you get the calculate button done and the buy button done, uh, but you haven't got time to do the cancel button today. What you can do is you can just stop the video and shut down your computer, come back another day, just go into the uh, video description on YouTube, find out the section that's doing the cancel button, click on that blue number there and I'll take you straight to the cancel button uh, sort of uh, coding and instructions, all right? So best to break this up over several days if you want to. So there are downloads available for this lesson. Uh, there's a link in the YouTube video description. There's the step-by-step -step instructions, which we're going through right now in this video. There's also a code listing. So if you don't have time or don't want to type all of the code, you can get the Word doc of the code listings and paste them in for each button and uh, get them working, all right? So that'll save you a lot of time. Or if you're a teacher, maybe you want to do that so that you can build a solution uh, program up for the students quickly. All right, now, the first thing we need to talk about is an added complication, the difference between the screen form and the program code, okay? So we did the screen form last lesson. This lesson we're doing the program code. We need the screen and program to talk to each other, but they cannot do that directly. This two, which is on the screen here, when you type in that you want two t-shirts, uh, that's character format. And that's actually on the form, it's just a whole bunch of black pixels turned on on your LCD screen that make the shape of the number two. It's not actually a number we can do mathematics with. So when we take it into the program, we have to have this programming code, which looks all horrible and complicated, but basically we're just setting up a memory variable uh, in the computer's memory, just grabbing a memory error that we're going to call black t quantity number, and it's going to be an integer. So that means they'll have to type in a whole number for that. They can't order one and a half t-shirts. It has to be one, two, three, four, etc. This if check checks that they have typed in a number, and what this does is it sets that number value we're going to use in the program to do mathematics with that we've defined up here, sets it up uh, so that it's an integer. So it goes to the txt black t quantity text. So txt means text box. And so it's going to this text box on the form, grabbing that and it's parsing it. It does a process called parsing to convert it into a number which the program can use. All right. Now, when if, if this check will fail, if they've just left that as a question mark, and they haven't filled in a number, and that's how we got that error message showing up. We've got an else there that uh, make the label uh, say error quantity for the error, all right? So yeah, this pixel thing has to be converted into a number thing for the program to be doing maths on it. So when you're going from the form to the program, you need conversion of character into number. Now, when we go back the other way, we do all our calculations, work out a kid's t-shirt's $15, um, times it by two, and then when we've got our answer, the LBL, um, the black T total number inside the program, uh, before we can put it out on the form, we need to turn that number, computer number, into character form, back into those pixel dots so we can just display it on the screen. So we do an STR, we string it up. We do STR, turn it into a character string. So you do STR brackets and then the name of your program uh, variable in memory. And if we just do this, that would display it as 30. But because it's money, we're going to do an extra step. We're going to convert it into uh, the character 30. Then we're going to go on this label black t total text on the form again. And we're going to do another function called format currency, which will make the $30 display as $30.00. So it's in currency or money format. All right. And that's how 
back on the screen, the answer comes up with a dollar sign on it and dot oo. All right, it's from this code in the program. So there are these complications uh, that we have to do these conversions. So remember, the form is character land where we've just got things that we can see and no maths or magic happens on the form. All right, and it's just these are just LCD dots on the screen. There's a whole bunch of blue dots uh, on the LCD screen that make the uh, image of $40, all right? But what we have to do is this number two here, remember we had to do that integer.parse function inside the program, and it actually gets stored in the program as binary because uh, computers work on electric on off switches, which is either one or a zero. Zero means it's off, one means it's turned on. We're not gonna go into binary, but just trust me, that's how it is uh, in binary inside the computer. And it'll go into this memory location in the computer, black T quantity number. Uh, then we've got the total. We have to define another memory location called the total. And if it's an adult one, because here they've clicked adult, it should hit this code and work out that the black T total is going to be 20 times uh, how, whatever the quantity is that they've put here, 20 times two. So it should come out 40, which uh, we can see there it has. And so it works out 40, but that's in binary inside the program. Uh, then we string that up uh, to put it in this, this one here is called LBL black T total. That's a component on the form we've named LBL black T total. All right, and we're also going to take that LBL black T total, uh, the text that's here on the form, and also put a dollar sign and cents on it. All right, so we do that, and then so first it goes on the form as forty, then it gets dollar forty. Oh, it happens so quickly between these two lines of code, you won't even see it. It just comes up on the screen, looks like forty dollars straight away. All right, so the program is binary number land, and the screen form is character land. And when you go back from the program, you've done some calculations, you want to put the answer back out on the screen uh, into this guy, which is called LBL um, black T total, uh, when we set up the form, uh, you have to use string and if it's dollars, you have to also do format currency, all right? So we've got these sort of two functions, things we do in the program, uh, just to get it so we can display it with dollars. This one here, we're turning the character into a number and this is turning the number back into character stuff that can um, be little dots on the screen. So yeah, look, this stuff, is really complicated, seems really complicated the first time you do it. But the good thing is when you have to do it on another program, you'll just be able to come back to this one and see how what, what code you needed and easily put the exact same code uh, in your other program and it'll work. All right, so uh, it's kind of like the form, think of the form as being like the fridge. So the form is like the fridge and we've got these things like the input data in here is that we've got some vegetables, coconut milk and some chicken and the kitchen is where all the action happens. That's the program. That's where we do all of the work. And that's the hard part. Setting up the form, that other lesson you did before this one, should have been pretty easy. We're just dragging and dropping things out onto the screen, just like you go shopping and just put the things in the fridge. Uh, it's really easy. Uh, it's here that in the program, the program can't use these whole um, fruits or anything. We've got to chop them all up and then we've got to assemble everything we need together and put it into the uh, wok at the, in the right order and cook it for a certain amount of time. And then we've got some yummy uh, green Thai curry dinner. And if we've cooked a lot, if we're smart, we cook a lot so that we can save some for another night and put it in the fridge or the freezer. So the leftovers, the processed food can go back in the fridge. All right, so it's the chef that does, or the person cooking does all the work in the kitchen. It's a program that does um, all the work for our processing and cook, doing the cooking up is a lot harder than just going shopping and putting things in the fridge or just getting these uh, leftovers out of the fridge and putting them in the microwave and heating them up and having dinner um, another night. All right, so this is the easy stuff, the form. The complicated stuff is the cooking, the program. Uh, now, someone who's just looking at the form thinks all the magic happens there. Uh, if it was maybe some school uh, student in the morning, uh, they saw, hey, there's all this coconut milk and this chicken and stuff in the fridge. When they get home uh, after school, after they went to sport training and they get home late, uh, they see, oh, wow, 
uh, all that stuff's gone and now there's a green chicken curry I can heat up for dinner and uh, they're very happy all right so that's trying to explain what's going on so that took a while this is going to be a long lesson uh, but we're trying to get you to really kind of start understanding programming concepts and what you're doing here rather than just giving you the answers all right so as we saw in that demo way back at the beginning the idea of this whole this screen is how they use it is they can see okay it's this is the black tea section so this is for people buying black t-shirts and we have to pick a size there's three sizes and you click on that radio button you get that black dot in there and they want to get two of them and then they click the calculator and that should show thirty dollars all right this is the first bit of programming we're doing we're going to take uh, this value we're going to take that value we're going to go into the program and chop things up and cook and do some fancy stuff and then we'll have this processed uh, answer at the end that that's going to cost thirty dollars all right so we're not worrying about the buy button or the cancel we're just working on the calculator button at the moment so it's good idea uh, to always think about okay how would this be done if we didn't have the program code all right well you could look at the screen and work out okay they want two kids t-shirts you could load up the excel spreadsheet that's got all your prices in it and you could go oh yeah they want black tea okay well black tea kids they cost fifteen dollars each all right so they want two of those so 15 plus another 15 now uh, that's going to be thirty dollars and we can put that on the screen here so the quantity uh, so that's how you could work it out without the computer so basically with the without the computer you've got to have the whole price list and go through it and identify okay black tea now what size was it it's kid size oh I can get $15 then I take that 15 and multiply it by the two and I have an answer of 30 and I put that back out on the screen so what happens in the program is this quantity screen character remember that's just dots on the screen that's got to be converted into an integer number uh, so that we can do some multiplying by 15 inside the program and that's what we need to do and come up with an answer of 30 then we're going to also do that format currency with it inside the program so to turn it into 30 dollars in a dark blue color and put that back out on the form all right so that's what this calculate button has to do it has to uh, look at the size and find it in the prices and get the right dollar amount then it has to multiply the dollar amount by this quantity after we've converted it into an actual computer number and it'll get an answer format that answer as money and put that answer back out onto the screen all right so it's always a good idea to uh, think about how you do this without the program because the program does it pretty much the same way and we've got a list there of the things that we need to do all right so the program needs to be able to work out the price of a shirt for each of these different sizes of black tea now how are we going to do that inside the program uh, we'll show you that in a minute and then once it's worked out the price of the t-shirt just needs to multiply that price times the number of shirts a quantity so the form math maths formula in the program will have to be that the total black t dollars is going to be uh, the price of the size they're buying times how many they want the quantity so working out uh, the price for each of the different sizes remember they put sizes on they don't put prices on uh, we have to have some if else logic so we say all right let's check out uh, what's going on here so if the kid size is selected uh, then the black tea total well kids are 15 so all we have to do is multiply 15 times how many they want all right maybe they haven't selected the kids maybe they want adult ones so we've got an else if here okay if it's adult um, just multiply how many they want by 20 and that'll be your black tea total uh, maybe it was big boy all right so if it's big boy they're more expensive we have to do 30 times the quantity of how many they want and that'll be the total for the black t-shirts uh, now it, it could be that they didn't click any of these and they've just pressed the calculator button forgetting to click the size so if that happens well, if processing will ignore all of these because none of those are clicked it'll get down to here and we're just going to make sure the black tea total stays at zero and give an error message tell them there's an error on the size and that'll sort of uh, show up on the screen uh, in bright yellow and red 
and then they'll know, oh, hang on, I've got to go and click the size and try press the calculator again uh, to get this thing to work. Now, this code we've put in here is called pseudocode, where we've just thought about it and worked it out in plain English. A lot of our students start coding this code in uh, to their VBNet program and uh, then get red squiggles everywhere and all these errors and nothing works, because this is pseudocode. Uh, what we need to do now is translate that into VBNet code. Or if we're writing this in Python, we could easily work out the same logic of what needs to be done, but we'd have to convert this plain English version of what needs to be done into Python code, which would look slightly different than the VBNet one if we were doing Python. All right, so any language you're doing, uh, the pseudocode's a universal skill that people uh, do. They just write it out rough first uh, so they know what the coding has to do and then they get into the details. So this is the details. So you double click on the button on the form that's a calculator for the black T, that icon, double click on it and VB will uh, generate this private sub and an end sub down the bottom there, which we can't see, it's off the screen at the moment. And first up we need this code. So remember, we've got a dimension, a black T quantity number, we've got to set up a memory location, then we've got to check what's on the form. What's on the form has TXT in front of it, right? So if you're getting confused, the stuff on the form is TXT or it's LBL for the program we're doing. So TXT, we know this is on the form. So we're gonna check if it's numeric and if it is, uh, that's good. We can work out the number we need in computer number stuff in the memory. We just need to do integer pars and then we'll get that number. Uh, now, if it wasn't numeric, if it failed this check, uh, we're just going to have to reset everything back and tell them there's an error in the quantity that they don't have a whole number typed in there. So if they type in 2.5, uh, they should get this error quantity message, all right, because it'll fail this uh, is numeric and fail being an integer. All right, now, after we've done that, that's the converting, then we're ready to actually do that. You know how we had that if-else uh, pseudocode on the previous screen there, previous slide, uh, we can now do that. So we've got, if the opt kids black T, because remember that radio button on the form when you were building the form in the previous lesson had to be named opt kids black T. If you didn't name it properly, what will happen is you'll get a red squiggle here. And because it's got opt in front of it, you know, opt, hang on, that's a radio button. I need to go check its name out on the form and fix it up. We have got red squiggles though on black T total. Now, how's that happened? Uh, well, in VBNet, you have to define your variable. So to get rid of these red squiggles, you'll just have to go right up the top of the program code, right, right underneath public class form one, which never, don't ever change that. Just leave that as it is. We need to put in a dim dimension black T total as decimal because we want them to be able to have dollars and cents. Now, if you were doing this in Python, Python doesn't need this. Uh, and that's why a lot of people say, oh, Python's so much better because it's so much easier. Well, I don't know. Because Python, when it sees a new uh, variable name, it doesn't know. It just automatically makes a variable in its memory. Uh, VBNet is more um, fussy and you have to make the variable. So VBNet wants to know decimal numbers are going in here because it's dollars and cents. And so we've got to do that up the top of the program. Uh, once you put that in, these red squiggles will all go away and that should be okay. Um, so it's just working out, okay, if it's a uh, kids one, let's charge them $15. If it's adult, let's do $20. If the radio button they've clicked, dot checked means they've um, put the black dot inside that radio button. Uh, we're going to make it 30 and we're going to multiply it by uh, this black T quantity number we've converted uh, for use in the program. Uh, now, if they didn't click a radio button to pick the size, we're going to give that error that there's an error with the size and that should, they'll see that on the screen and realize in bright yellow and red and realize, oops, I've got to go uh, click in one of those sizes and try press the calculate button again. All right, now the code isn't quite finished yet. There's a couple more things to do. Uh, remember that stuff about we've worked out the black T total. We've got a binary number inside the computer's memory, like inside my brain here. We've got to pull that out. So I've got to sort of write that down on a piece of paper and show you. So we've got to string it up. We've got to string that up uh, 
so it'll convert it to a character type number. Then we'll do a bit of a format currency on it as well. Now this code here, you don't have to memorize that. You can always Google for this and find it or find it on Stack Overflow or go back to a previous program and get it. Don't try and memorize all that. But that's just a whole bunch of stuff which will make it basically dollars dot zero zero for the cents. Uh, so we have to do those two bits and then we're at the end sub and we've got everything we need for the calculator button. All right, so the calculator button should be ready to go as long as you don't have any red squiggles there. Now, what if you had a red squiggle under LBL black T total? Well, that'd probably mean back on your form that that little label on the form isn't actually got the name LBL black T total. Maybe you made the name LBL black total, all right? you'll have to go change it on the form so it matches exactly the same spelling and uh, uppercase and lowercase, big and little letters is here. If you get a red squiggle, go back and check your form. If it's an LBL or a TXT, if you get a red squiggle and it's not one of those, because remember we got a red squiggle for black T total, then you need to go and check whether you've got a dim statement in your program. So the red squiggles our students get on their screens uh, which prevent their programs from running. It's usually because the name on the form doesn't exactly match up with this. Maybe they had a little letter here instead of a big letter. Uh, less times they sort of get the ones where it's something that's not an LBL or a TXT. It's just a black T total, which is a variable inside the program because they've forgotten to do the dim statement. But anyway, it should all be good. And you can press that start, which is up the top of uh, your VB screen there. Uh, the green arrow and what should happen is that if we enter adult and we say we want one of them and we click the calculator button we should get $20 so the program should be figuring out okay they've picked adult that's $20 from all that if else stuff it does then I'll do the $20 times the one after it's been converted into a computer number and work out one lot of $20 it's $20 worth of black t-shirts, all right? So that's working all right. Do another test where you pick three kids maybe, and that should be our uh, kids are $15 each. Three of them would be three times 15. That's actually $45, so that is correct. That's working properly. Uh, so do them on a calculator to check. That's what this blue box is for. Uh, here they've ordered four big boy ones. Oh, that's gonna cost a bit because big boy ones are $30 each. So. Uh, four times 30 on a calculator is 120 and our screen has a 120 dollars showing up there so this looks like it's all working so the calculator button is done and we can move on to doing the buy button but not quite yet because remember there are a couple of error messages we'd set up for the calculator button as well uh what happens if they don't enter the size and they just click the calculator button? So here they've put that they want five of them, but they haven't chosen the size. There's no black dots in there. If you click the calculator button, it should say error size. Now it should be in uh, yellow. Oh no, at this stage it's not in yellow and red. It's just in blue. Okay, we'll talk about that later. But what you should be able to do, right, is just go now and click adult leave the quantity there and click the calculator again. And because you've got a size now, it should work out that it is $100 and you could buy it uh, once we've got the buy button uh, cancelled. So when you get this error, uh, you don't have to cancel or clear the screen or do anything. All you have to do is go back and click one that you want, click the calculator again, then the error should go away and you should have the right answer. Uh, there could also be a problem if they don't enter the quantity. So maybe they picked a size, but they forgot to do quantity and just click the calculator button. Then they get this message and they'd need to put a quantity in and click it again and then it should be okay. Uh, so that's the calculator function, that's all working. Now, the only thing is, uh, Sometimes we like to make things more effective, it's called, that they're easier and better to use. So Colin has trouble sometimes noticing there's an error, like he's clicked the calculator, but he's not seeing anything or he's wondering what's going on. And he tries to click the buy button and then that doesn't work. So on this error, we just decided for Colin, uh, because he's a bit of an older bloke like me, uh, we just have it really shine out to him that there's an error in the quantity. So we change the color. Now, how do you change the color of the writing in the background? Uh, it's quite easy. Just find this bit of the code here uh, during the error processing before we reset the uh, thing to question mark and do the error quantity. You just set your back color here to yellow. So usually when you're making the form, 
you went into properties on the form and set them there back in the previous lesson, you can actually set properties in the programming code as well. And that's what we're doing here. We're just saying, hey, for that label, for its back color, use the color yellow. And hey, for that label, for its for color, for the font, use the color dark red. And that's how we produce that. And also when there's a quantity error, um, a size error, you want to do the same thing. All right, so you need to find out where the size error stuff is here, where it says error size. And just before that, we want to change it to um, yellow right, yellow background and dark red writing. But then when it does work properly, we don't want to have yellow and dark red. So you need to go down to uh, here, just after the integer pass bit, um, just set the back color here to gray and dark blue to make sure that when you're showing an actual answer that's okay, it is uh, on a gray background and it's dark blue in color. So you've got to add three lots of codes to get this uh, special colorful thing happening and then that'll be right. So that's the calculator button done. We've been gone going for 30 minutes, probably best you get the downloads, uh, especially the Word doc, which kind of summarizes the code you need. Uh, get that calculator button working. Uh, get the errors working and make sure they sort of change color to um, a bright yellow so Colin can see them. And then uh, do all that testing. Make sure that calculator button for the black t-shirts is working A-OK. -okay. And then you might just want to take a break and stop for today. That's fine because you can come back to the video and just in the timeline index, find out where it says setting up the buy button uh, for the black t-shirts. All right, so that's what we're going to do next. All right, so if you double click on the buy button on your form, that should take you in and it'll make, VB will generate this private sub BTN buy black t click and an N sub. And in between, you've got to put all this code that we want to uh, take the order total and add on that black T total we've worked out. So this is doing that right hand corner uh, order total updating. Uh, and so we have to, after we've done the maps, we've actually got to put it in the label. So remember, we've got to string it up and format the currency so that that order total in the top right hand corner will show up in dollars and cents. Now again, we've got red underlines on order total. Why is that? Because we haven't defined an order total variable in memory yet. So I've got to go right up the back of our top of the program again. And remember how we did black T total, we've got to do dim order total as decimal. All right, so that VBNet knows about it. Then the red squiggles should go away and then you should be able to run the program. So here we've tested it out. They picked big boy, they typed in three, they did the calculator to work out it's $90. When they click the buy button, what should happen is the buy button should go green because it's disabled now and you can't click it anymore. And this should have said, okay, uh, let's add $90 onto the order total, which was sitting at zero. So zero plus 90 would make 90. And so that's what we're uh, hoping to see when we click the buy button and test it out. So that's what you need to do uh, when you test it out. And just rerun of a few different numbers and sizes, make sure everything's working okay and getting the right numbers. And that number goes up here and all we have to worry about now is uh, the cancel button. All right, now the cancel button is, remember, is for when if someone has bought three t-shirts and gone, oh, hang on, $90, oh, I can't afford that this week, uh, let's just get uh, two of those shirts, all right, and I'll buy the other one when I get my next paycheck. So maybe they want to cancel this, clear it all off, go again, but have a quantity of two, all right? So that's what we're going to look at doing now. So the cancel button. Uh, the processing for the cancel button, we want to basically um, turn the buy button back on and we want to cancel and reverse out uh, what we just did. So the order total needs to be reduced back down because they've decided not to do that purchase now. Uh, the item labels need to be reset to question mark where they had question marks in them. We need to make sure all the radio buttons are cleared out because maybe the mistake was that it was the wrong size and they want to pick a different size this time. And we need to uh, make sure the buy button's re-enabled and it's ready to go again. 
All right, so what should happen is uh, if they've bought one adult here, one, and it costs $20 and they've updated the order total with the buy button because it's gone green because it's deactivated now or not enabled or disabled, uh, we want to reverse that out because it turns out, no, hang on, I actually want to get two of those adult shirts. Uh, so when you click cancel, what needs to happen is all these clear out. This will go back to a question mark. This goes back to question marks. The button gets re-enabled and we're ready to go again. And they can click adult. This time they can put a two in, do the calculate, which should come out $40 and do the buy, which will put the $40 up here. All right, so, um, yep. So that's it for that. So yeah, sorry, that was the before picture. I'm looking at the Empire T. <laughs> This is the black tea before you click cancel and this is afterwards, right? That's all cleared out and the order total's gone back to zero. All right, so sorry about that. That's the other t-shirt we're going to uh, work on next lesson. Uh, so Colin needs this function because sometimes he messes things up, but often customers change their mind about what they want to order, especially when they just order these things without thinking and then realize, whoa, it's going to cost that much. Uh, they might want to change their order. All right, so programming, what sort of programming do you need? Well, uh, we only want to do the cancel if they've actually bought some t-shirts and the order totals above zero at the moment. Uh, because maybe someone's just hasn't done the calculating or buying it and they just decide, oh, I'll just click this cancel button to see what it does. Well, we don't want it to do anything. All right, so we've got this condition here that uh, buy button black tea enabled is false. That means they've already pressed it and now it's disabled. And also order total greater than zero means they've already bought something. All right, and we want to reduce the order total uh, in the variable order total uh, because we've still got the black tea total sitting around in that memory. So let's just take our order total and subtract it off to bring that order total back down again. Uh, then you need to string that up and currency it and you can put the new reduced order total on the screen. We want to set the black tea total back to zero, set these question mark things on the screen and dot checked false for all those radio buttons. We'll just make them all clear again with no dots in them and make sure the buy button's enabled now so that we can redo everything. So put that code in and when you test it out here, we've bought three adult t-shirts, the order total showing $60, that's correct, but they decide to cancel. So this gets reduced down to zero. Uh, these all get cleared off. The quantity in dollars go back to question mark the button becomes re-enabled so they can redo the order for the black t-shirts. Or maybe there was a mistake. They didn't want black ones, they actually wanted Empire ones. So they can just leave this blank and go over and do the Empire ones when we've got the part two code done. So that's everything for part one. We've done the calculator button, the buy button and the cancel buttons and they're all working okay. So the challenge task is, uh, we gave you a challenge task for the previous lesson on building the form. And the challenge task was to make a similar sort of form for a pizza shop. The only difference was we had four sizes this time, small, medium, large, and family, but everything else is set up pretty much the same. Uh, now someone emailed and said, well, why do you have four different pictures of the shirts and stuff? Couldn't you just have one little screen with a drop down list saying what sort of t-shirt they want to buy? Uh, you could do it that way, but this one we figure is just, it's just easier for Colin, our client, to use because he can look at the t-shirt and know it's the right one. Just like you can look at the pizza and go, yeah, that's the one with the pineapple. Okay, this is the box I want to do the stuff in. All right, so um, it just makes it easier and actually makes the programming easier too. So that's why we do it that way. So let's have a preview of part two, what we're going to be doing in part two. I will show you an easy way to copy and paste that black T program code and use replace all to quickly make code for the other three t-shirt styles. So remember when we were making the form, we had to sort of set up all that black t-shirt one. Then we put it in a panel, draw the panel around it and it's in a group. Then you can just copy that whole panel three times and change the pictures of the t-shirts and change some of the text and change the naming of all those items for the form and that way it was just a bunch of um, kind of renaming and doing things and we didn't have to worry about dragging all the things out onto the form again. It's the same with the code. We don't have to worry about typing in all that code again. Uh, we've got the black T code. We can uh, quickly change it in Microsoft Word. Now we'll give you a little preview of that and show you now, okay? 
All right, so here we are in Visual Studio looking at the form. Now, anytime you want to look at the code, you can go up here and just go view code and that'll take you into the code. So here's all the code we've written uh, for the black t-shirt, all right? Now, if we're gonna do the Empire one, we'll have to put up in here, we'll need another dim for the Empire one. So let's go dim Empire uh, T total uh, as a decimal and just uh, click off that. And so we've got that set up for the Empire T because we knew we had to do it for the black T. That, that'll stop us getting um, red squiggles and stuff. So what we can do is we can take all this code we've written here. So I'm just holding down my mouse button and I'm just highlighting all of this code uh, we've written, but not the end class. Uh, remember your program has a front and back cover. It always has to have public class form one at the top like the front cover of a book, and down the bottom it has to have end class, the back cover. Now if you rip the back cover off, like take this end class away or have two of them, uh, your whole program will mess up. Uh, the program has to have a public form one class up the top and an end class at the bottom. Uh, but anyway, what we can do here is we can go edit copy, or you can do control C, or can you right click and copy? You can even right click and copy as well. Just your usual copy methods. Now go to Microsoft Word and start a new blank document and just paste this in. So I'm just gonna use, hold down the CTRL key and press V. So control and V, CTRL and V. And I've got all my black T code in there, right? Now I want this all to become empire code. So all I have to do is, up in Word, as long as you're on the Home tab, see up the left-hand corner, we're in the Home tab, go over to the right-hand corner, there's a thing called Replace. And you just open up the Replace by clicking on Replace, and we wanna change everything that says Black T uh, into Empire, because the other short sort of thing we're doing is an Empire T. So basically just wanna change everything that says Black uh, to say Empire instead. So you just go Replace All, you click that button, and it says they've done 55 replacements. All right, now it's best to just have a bit of a check at what it's done. So it looks like we've got opt kids empire, label order total by empire, uh, BTN cancel empire T. Uh, I think everything's okay. Calculate empire T. So yeah, we've just changed anything that was black into empire and I think we're good to go. So what you can do is uh, you can take this code now and I'm just gonna set something up first to show you something. So this one, btn by empire. I'm deliberately gonna make a mistake here. So on the form, Let's say I wasn't on the ball when I made the form and I've called that BTN by Empire, all right? But anyway, back to this. Uh, so I'm just setting up for an error to occur. Uh, what's gonna happen is we just take all of this stuff, right, in Word, highlight it all of our mouse by holding down our mouse button and you can just right click and copy that and we go to our Visual Studio Code, uh, which is in Form 1VB tab here or you can go View and Code and down where this black T stuff finishes, we can just uh, CTRL and V, or we should be able to go edit and paste, should do the same thing. Uh, we've just put in all our Empire T um, processing. Now check the Empire stuff, are there any red squiggles? And there should be a red squiggle. Uh, B10 Empire T. Ah, here's the red squiggle. All right, so if you try and run this, so you didn't see that red squiggle there. See, it says there were build errors, so we say no, and we should have an output panel. Uh, where is my output panel? Uh, view. All right, so we're not seeing that output panel. Go to view, and there is an output here, but there is a thing, other windows. So view and other windows, and his output, all right? So I must have hit this X here and closed mine. So we'll have to go down here and get the double arrows, drag it back. Uh, there's no output from the build, but it's showing me there's four errors. So if I click on this red X that has four errors, 
it says handles event required uh, and so on it's line 182 and that's where that red squiggle is now because it's btn by empire t uh that's a btn like so anything that's lbl txt btn that means it's with your form so you go back to your form and look at that button and i'll just drag this across a bit so we can see it and if we go up the top here as long as we've clicked a to z to see our properties see how it's btn by empire well the actual code wants it to be btn by empire t so we just make that fix and press enter and then when we go back to the code now uh, and you click around a couple of times see how that red error is gone and we'll try start it again and see whether we get any errors or not and so it's building it again uh, which will just take a little while and this time it's running so it should be all right so we should be able to do both black tea now so let's just check that's still working we calculate and we buy a black tea whoops buy it and that's twenty dollars we should be able to get some empire teas now so let's buy three um big boy empire teas all right and we get ninety dollars now this is the only thing the prices are different for empire we'll explain this in the part two lesson uh three uh big boys should be actually i think three times 35 dollars but we can fix that up easily in part two. And if you buy that, see how it added the 20 to the 90 and the total's now 110. Now, if we decide we want to uh, cancel that $90, uh, we can cancel it and see how it went back to $20 now because we've only got the black t-shirts. So yeah, you can actually uh, copy and paste. So you could now go to Microsoft Word and do a replace all because this is all Empire stuff. So you could do replace and up here have empire okay and in here you could have i think the next t-shirt is the big pie one and you could just replace all and 55 replacement sounds right and close this and now you've got all your code for the big pie so you could just copy this out and put it into your vbnet program but we're not going to do that because we're out of time all right, so that'll all be covered. We'll go over that again in detail in part two, but that was just to help you out if you want to zoom ahead and get the other t-shirts done. We'll talk about the form load subroutine, uh, how to get the submit button for when you finished your order and ordered all your t-shirts, uh, how, whoops, sorry, how to do the clear all button, which will clear the whole screen. <gasps> so once you finish one customer order, don't have to stop the program and load again just clear the whole screen you're ready to do the next one i uh, will also put checks in that they do type a customer name and phone number uh, that they don't leave those customer details blank and also fix up any bug fixes so that'll be coming up in the future have a look out for t-shirt shop program code part two uh, that'll be the name of it on youtube but we've got to get this part one up there first then we'll work on our part two and that'll come up in the future all right so remember we've got a whole programming course you can also go there to uh, find out the lessons and the youtube videos and the downloads for them and so that's it for this lesson so that was 48 minutes all that was long but remember if you're watching at double speed it's only 24 so remember uh give this big video a big thumbs up like because uh it's helping you learn how to build applications and even if you're not going to use vbnet uh, to build your application it's teaching how to think and think okay i need a cancel button and how what do i do if they cancel how do i reset everything because uh, you do the exact same steps but you just write different little exact programming lines in the code that's all uh, so give it a big thumbs up like and remember our channel is there for you with lots and lots of lessons with thousands and thousands of views keep uh, viewing them people and keep liking them and subscribe 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 and we'll see you in the next lesson.